recently reading Mein Kampf. Mm-hmm. Uh, just I'm, I'm sh- you know what? That's the thing. Even there's something in, there's probably things in Mein Kampf that are not the surface level read. If you get all hung up on, on all, probably all his crap about, uh, you know, his anger, anger at Jews and this and that, all this crap. It's like, okay, yeah, that that's right on the surface. Try to get below that. Try to see, you know, how is he, how is he creating the Jews as a cope somehow? Like how is yeah. he using, why, why are they his, his scapegoat? And I mean, scapegoat in the, so René Girard's, uh, concept of the scapegoat. I mean, in that sense, whereas, uh, you know, Hitler uses, it wants to make the the Jews uh, the scapegoat for World War One. Yeah, I mean, what? for me, the starting point, similar with Ayn Rand, is uh, th- like Mein Kampf is not a good place to search, not just because Hitler is evil, but it's just not full of ideas. No, it is not. It has its significance due to a lot of Historically things. speaking. Yeah, but, but the yeah. starting point for me with Hitler is like to acknowledge that he's human and to at least consider the possibility that any one of us could have been Hitler. So like the, not well, that's to make a Peterson the- kind of concept. Also, um, Jonathan Haidt has a thing about uh, the difference between hate and disgust mechanisms and things yeah. like that. And so he used, he goes into the looking at uh, Hitler and his, through his, his diary entries and journals and stuff like that mm-hmm. to look uh, and see it more as the, the disgust mechanism then also try and see like if there's any evolutionary biological, uh, attachment to this, whatever. I mean, you're right. He is a human being. Any of us are, we're all human beings. It's not that it's probably jarring for people to think, but we're, we're all, I guess, supposed potentially capable of just being in, and all these evil people in the world think they're doing it for the sake of good. Yeah. Which makes them the most dangerous. And there's some, there's differences in levels of insane. Mm-hmm. I think Hitler was way more insane than Stalin. I think Stalin legitimately thought he was being, doing good. I would like, say that's probably true. Stalin, it was just outright brutal. Like yeah. he had, he had his five-year plan. He had all these other things. Uh, he just had a much lower value for human life. Yes. And so he was willing to take, make decisions about what he actually as a as a good executive mm-hmm. of which he was of managing different uh, bureaucracies and so on he was willing to make decisions that resulted in mass human suffering where hitler was it seems like to me what much moodier so allowed emotions and moods to make yeah. decisions i think we also have to consider um the different trajectories and how, where, and when they were making their decisions. And I mean, not by time specifically, but, you know, Hitler engaged into this, this conflict across multiple continents. And then that everything that comes with basically fighting the whole world, Stalin had his conflict and then he really mostly compartmentalized the rest of it. So he was dealing with his own internal instead of dealing with the internal and the external. So if Stalin was put under a world war scenario, I don't know, maybe he would have eventually lost his marbles too. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure that uh, you, that's, you're right there. The hunger for power was more internalized for Stalin. He wanted to control the land that already existed as opposed to wanting to colonize other land. He was as nationalistic as Hitler, but, uh, and was as, capable and willing for uh, violent conflict as Hitler for the, the aims of the state. Yeah. But he, he, he centered and internalized prior to then externalizing and moving outwards. Whereas even maybe prior to him, there was an interest to continually push communism in an uh, aggressive sense, following on the momentum from the, the what, 1918 revolution and that the halting of that uh through various aspects i guess uh, in germany part of that was the the national socialists like they they came up and then they they were the other ones to fight the communists and so you had the two totalitarians going after it um but then in the rest of the world that was not dealing with um totalitarian aspects it was just it wasn't gonna stick especially in the west and other places but Stalin seemed just, you know, casually thinking, it seemed like Stalin 
decided to go, all right, well, we're not going to go just start launching right into more conflicts here. We're going to, these dudes are going down. So that's cool for us because they hate us and we hate them. Mm -hmm. Um, but now we're going to, we're going to focus internally and then we're going to work on growing at a slower rate and picking our battles a bit more specifically. And of course there's, you know, you can get to the, even this is after Stalin, but yeah, you got the Besmanov type stuff talking about subversion in, in cultural aspects. Yeah, I mean, there's this fascinating dynamics of propaganda throughout the mm -hmm. whole period. That that's yeah, that's, that's a whole nother kernel. Yeah. Do you think Hitler could have been stopped? One of the things that's kind of fascinating to look at is how many nations, both journalists and nations, wanted almost craved to take Hitler at his word that he wanted peace until it was too late. Mm -hmm. They almost wanted to be delude themselves. I mean, the same is true with. The Stalin, uh, people want to take Stalin at his word for- oh, they still delude themselves. Yeah. I mean, we, will delude, we, we will delude ourselves over any number of things and until even after the fact where the history just says, hey, fuck face, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the, you, you cannot supplement your pseudo reality onto actual reality here. Yeah. Uh, any, uh, but yet we deal with people in pseudo realities constantly. It, I mean, it, it, we wow. will always find a way to- to change reality to suit our needs. Well, the nature of truth now, there's now multiple actual truth. It's kind of fascinating. There's multiple versions of history that people are telling. You know, the the, the version yes. the <laughs> version of the, the, the Great Patriotic War in mm -hmm. Russia, the World War II in Russia is very different today under Putin mm -hmm. than the version that we're learning on uh, in the United States and then different than the version in Europe. In the United States, uh, the the hero of the war is the United States. In Europe, there's a much more sad and solemn story mm -hmm. of suffering and so on. Sure. In in Russia, it's the great uh, patriotic war. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it was the, it was a unifier uh, yeah. of a sense, and it. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you can't argue that war and conflict that and or I just even um, reducing that to stressors, agitation, suffering doesn't m create human motivation. You know, we started this off, you brought up uh, Frankel, and I'm like, yeah, Frankel's dope. Man's search for meaning, uh, Maslow's great. And and I talked to you about how I started to think like, man, do, do the ability for human beings to, to, to live and or potentially flourish in the worst environments you can think of is pretty incredible in and of itself. And that it's a crazy thought to think that without Frankel and Maslow ending up in concentration camps, do they write some of the most important books on philosophy in the 20th century? And that's insane on a lot of different levels. But- um, Yeah, suffering is a creative force. I mean, I don't, do you think we'll always have war? Do you, yes, do you we will always have war in, in some form or another. We, we need, quote unquote, air quotes for those just listening, uh, <laughs> war to survive. We need war to flourish. We need at least- Can you explain the quote, uh, the air quotes around well, the war? Well, because uh, take, <laughs> take, take, take the- You see wars as violence? No, wars okay. are not violence. So like, so when no, we're talking No, air quotes about because uh, while, you know what, us getting on the mat or just getting on these hardwood floors and wrestling yeah. around yeah. is not literal war. It's yeah. war of a sorts. You know, we're, you know, it is, it is a diluted form of war. American football is a diluted form of war. All this, these are diluted forms of war. Tennis is a diluted form of war. Um, and I think the, one of the best explanations I ever got from this and another person very, uh, impactful on, on my life and outlook and w thinking about things, Cormac McCarthy. And so in Blood Meridian, there's this fantastic speech about war given by the judge, which there's a ton of fantastic speeches on things given by the judge. Yeah. All that exists in creation without my knowledge does so without my consent. I'm like, well, okay. That's pretty heavy. That's, that's hard. Go oh, ahead. Can you break that up? Can you say that again? Uh, all things that exist in creation, all things that exist without my knowledge do so without my consent. W what does that mean to you? Well, I think from the judge's perspective it's like well i didn't consent to to that bird or that dog or this building or all this like all of this you know i didn't create it so it's done so without my consent and if it's up to my consent well 
I'll design it how I want to. There's a, another similar uh, look into how the judge is in that book is he would study everything everywhere he went. And so he's collected this group of ne'er-do-wells from all over to go on these hunts uh, against uh, certain uh, tribes in, in the Southwest um, and getting paid by the US government, the Mexican government. So he's on these Indian hunts and yet they're going to all these different places and they would st stay the night in a cave somewhere and he would find cave paintings and he would write them all down or he would find old pieces. There's a, an example of him, uh, the narrator, uh, explaining how watching the judge and how he drawing everything. He's got this notebook just full of things, drawings and, and writings and how he found like a piece of armor from a conquistador or something way back in the day, a Spanish armor. And he draws it into his, his book and then crushes it. You and know? so that, so the reason we'll always have war in the society is because there's these struggle of amongst people that want to be the designers. There's there's that, but it's I, I'm just saying that uh he's got this whole quote on war, like war is about is is play. War war is a game. And the difference is is that what's at stake. So all things are a game of some sort. And some you're putting up for it or you're what you're willing to put up for it determines whether or not you're going to participate or not. And you know, all all aspects of any game is war. And it's just, what what is at stake? You know, if it's your life, it's a different story. If it's just a coin, it's another thing. A nice way to put it is uh, if humans play a game in this kind of pursuit of uh, creating, what, what, whatever the hell the reason is that we keep creating cooler and cooler things, mm -hmm. that, that it seems to be the result of a game that we naturally play, mm -hmm. we naturally mm -hmm. crave. I don't know. I mean, that's been the struggle of philosophy is to understand what is the underlying force of all that. Is it the will to power? Is it? I think will to power is a really great way of uh, of describing it. Do you want to be the winner of the game? No, not just. No, I don't look at will to power as being the winner of the game. Uh, well, I mean, if we're going to get philosophical, yes, you want to be the winner of the game. What does winning the game act, define? How you win? Everybody's going to define that win differently. You know, you could define the win in the most base level, like, oh, I got all the things. <laughs> well, if you got all those things without the the needing component of fulfillment, then you're going to be a very unhappy person with a whole lot of things. But there's a self-referential aspect to where, to me, the winner of the game is defined by the people playing the game. So if I'm playing a game, I want to win in the sense that most of the other people who are playing the game will say, yeah, that guy won. By their, by our collective definition of what, if I just come up, listen, I'm sort of, if I come well, up with a my lot own, of, that's a lot of weight on the external on you. Right. But that's, that's how games seem to work. Somewhat. So I'm already a winner in my life by defining my own definition of success. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm basically the best person in the world at doing uh, uh, me. At, at being Lex. Yeah. 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 So like, and that, I'm really happy with that. That's, yeah. that's a source of uh Well, I mean, think about it. Well, games are also uh, iterated, right? So you, you start off with your game yeah. and then your game with your immediates and then the game further than that and the game further than that and then the game today and the game tomorrow and the game next week and so it never ends and if you try to keep thinking about it that way no wonder people go crazy but <laughs> we we don't want to think about things that way we don't want to think about uh, being towards death we don't want to think about uh, whether or not i'm going anywhere after this other than in the ground or what have you like we, we you know so well, all, all of these games are a sense some distraction. This is where we uh, brought kind up. of, but I mean, it's it's violence. Is that um, we need to let this out, and so it, it is of our kids need to wrestle and play, just like animals need to wrestle and play. We need to have forms of competition. We need to have ways to to test ourselves to create uh, when uh, what is it? Uh, when at peace, a man of war makes war with himself. And so we need to be able to competently go at war with ourselves and go at war with our neighbor and go at war with our neighbor's neighbor in a way that is repeatable at the very least. So one, one way of saying that there will always be war, I mean, that's my ho hopeful view is that most of the war conducted in the future will be, like you said, the man must go to war with himself. That would it's, be great. That that's, that's what to me love is. 
is like focusing on yourself and your own improvement and your own creativity and towards others mm -hmm. feeling uh, n sort of emphasizing cooperative behavior and compassion and would be great. empathy. It would be great. But I mean, you can have, well, I'll put it to you this way. If you have uh, a whole community of Randians and a whole community of ANCOMs, and they could all like, uh, I don't know, a uh, toast of London on Netflix, and they love Netflix, and they love the internet, and they love uh, picking apart Mon Comp with you. They love like they like they all these things, even the esoteric that they can they yeah. can they can get on with. But yeah. at the at the fundamental root, they cannot help but go to war because they are literally oil and water. No, the, but see, but they would the the very labels they assign to themselves would need to dissipate. Well, this true. Is the, well, then you would have to stop being whatever it is that you took on as your ideological or religious point, right? Yeah, I mean, I there's some days I'm a ANCOM, some days I'm an NCAP, some, uh, <laughs> whatever the uh, anarchic, uh, anarchic capital. I mean, yeah. there's, it depends on the, uh, the, the hour, the minute of the day, you're constantly changing moods and embracing that flow, the change of opinions, of ideas. As there's some days where like, I'm actually yeah. cognizant of the fact because I've been not getting my sleep. And after I get some sleep, I see I'm so much more optimistic about mm. the world. The less and less sleep I get, the more sad uh, and cynical I get. I can see that. There's I, an I, up and down constantly. I, I, I don't even let my, well, okay. I try not to let. And most days it's never a problem. Any sort of like uh what are the, what the kids call it now black pilled way of thinking yes. be my 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 over my the umbrella which i hang under 